Um, I'm Lisa. I um, am the creative director of Pot and Box, founded here in Ann Arbor 10 years ago. Um, I was actually neighbors with Icon for four years, so hello to those of you who shared the wall and um, went through my Phil Collins years. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, okay, so mostly I am here to um, talk about Flower House, but um, let me tell you just a little bit about Pot and Box in case there are some friends out there I don't know yet. Um, we are um, Pot and Box, um, and we, we plant pots and boxes. That's how I branded it because I gardened for many years and then decided to specialize in it. And um, I started my business in 2007 when no one should have been starting a business. And um, luckily I was here in Ann Arbor, so U of M, um, I did many, many maize and blue flower arrangements. <laughs> Those are not on our Instagram feed. But, um, and um, so there was not a lot of um, money, uh, extra money uh, for clients to have me coming and doing their gardens and their pots and boxes and that kind of thing. So I had friends that started to get married and they said, can you do my wedding flowers? And I was like, that's totally different, but yeah, because that's what you do when you're a small business owner. You just say yes and you figure it out later. <laughs> so those are the kind of normal um, normal gardening and, and florist things we do. And then, um, as was mentioned in my intro, we a few years ago I found an old ice cream truck on Craigslist and um, I won a grant to fix it up and we cut out the side and we open it up and we sell flowers out of it all over the city. And people love it even though they are disappointed at first because they think they can get a barbecue sandwich. <laughs> um, and I also produce, this will be the sixth year of Holiday Market and Valentine's Day Market, two um, annual indie markets for um, local makers and artists. And we consistent, consistently have between 50 and 60 vendors and it's tons of fun. And um, so um, those things aren't necessarily having anything to do with gardening and flowers, but um, I really enjoy being a part of the community, and so I kind of stretch it into the, into the other parts. So um, I'm here today to talk a little bit about Flower House. Um, how many people came to Flower House? Yeah. <laughs> so Flower House was a floral art installation in 2015, and um, a lot of people ask me how I came up with the idea to fill an abandoned house in Detroit with flowers for three days. <laughs> and I trace it back to a long-standing love of Christo and Jean-Claude's work. Um, notably, I remember, I mean, I was seven, um, so I don't know if I remember it that year, but maybe at some point, um, them wrapping the Pont Neuf Bridge in Paris. And um, I knew I was in trouble when I, um, my question was not, now why would someone do something like that? But I thought, now how does someone do something like that? Um, I wasn't quite sure how I would embody my love of large-scale installations until I saw images from the 2012 Dior show in Paris when Rafe Simmons had taken over as creative director of the design house. And he found uh, this Paris mansion and filled the walls with flowers, each room a different color palette and um, a different um, set of flowers, and I was completely consumed. I was scouring the internet for images and videos and um, knew I would blatantly steal the idea and bring it to Detroit. So um, the image of all of these photos that I found online, the image that really stuck with me and really um, kind of burrowed into me was this image of the woman um, on the bottom, this beautiful woman in this gorgeous handmade gown, and she's completely taken out of her surroundings. Um, you know, it's like you go to another city, you wander into the art museum, and you're kind of wandering around, you haven't eaten, and then you can spot, you know, your Rothko or your whatever, and you can be just completely taken right out of your life, and you're not thinking about your grocery list or uh, any of that stuff. And so I would come to think of this as the breathtaking moment. And when I thought of this um, Dior show, you know, everyone's sitting there, they're fashion magazine editors and models, and um, nobody invited me. <laughs> um, and so I wanted to know what it felt like to be in a house full of flowers. And I wanted anybody else who was curious about that to be able to experience it and know what it would be like to see that, smell it, even I was like weirdly obsessed with what it would sound like to be in a room full of flowers. <laughs> So, um, like I said, I um, decided I would blatantly steal the idea. 
Um, however, I'm in Detroit, and so I scaled back the um, structure a little bit. I thought that I could get a, sh a shed kit from Home Depot, being like one florist before like, I like, thought of like, inviting other people into the project. Um, I was like, okay, I'm going to go to Home Depot. I'm going to get this shed kit. Um, I called some friends at MOCAD at the Contemporary Art Museum downtown. I was like, I want to build this thing, and I'm going to fill it with flowers. People can walk through, and it'll be so cool. And they're like, that sounds awesome. So I started thinking a little bit more about it, and, um, and it wasn't the scale. It wasn't that breathtaking moment. I didn't feel like it would have that pull to get you out of there. So um, I borrowed a house, <laughs> and um, some friends of mine had bought this, and they were waiting for someone to come along and buy it to fix it up and live in it. And um, it you know, obviously would take a, a nice chunk of cash to do that, so I felt pretty confident. They gave me keys, and I started taking measurements. And then the house sold to this really nice family, and I hated them. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I moped around for a little bit until I found myself at an auction, uh, actually in the city of Hamtramck, where I picked up my flower house. Um, so I, the weirdest text I've ever sent my mom, a photo of this house, and I was like, Mom, I bought a house. <laughs> <laughs> bought my first house. Um, so, um, oh, I know what I want to do. I want to dispel the myth of the $500 Detroit house. We've all heard about this, right? You can get a house in Detroit for $500. So um, it is totally not true. You can actually get two houses for $500. <laughs> <laughs> this one was next door, and it was next on the list. And I was like, oh, I'll take it. So 250 I had um, two houses in the lot in between. And I thought that um, would come in handy, uh, you know, kind of a shoot first, figure it out later kind of girl. So. Um, we started planning, and um, a really amazing husband and wife um, videographer team came on board, Rob and Na of Hello Future, and they're here in Ann Arbor. They came on board and um, uh, created this really beautiful video for us to introduce the project to the world. And I'm going to eat up three minutes of my time because it's such a beautiful video, and it can really tell the story. There is no key to open this door. The room's abandoned long ago. The paint, the glass, the trash, the holes. This house is strangely perfect. This once was a home to newlyweds. The floorboards held a child's first step, a Christmas dinner, a spouse's death. This house was once a home and will blossom again. For years now, the ceilings rot, abandoned, lost, a purpose without. But what if we could give it new life? One last hurrah, one last goodbye. A vision in focus of what I must do. I'm going to fill this house with flowers blue, red, yellow, purple, pink too. Exclude no colors, shades, or hues. And when it's all over, we'll tear the house down. Return this lot to flat soil ground. One last gift this house can give. And like a flower, be born anew. This plot of land will see better days. A bed of colors will rise in place of the structure sitting in disarray and decay. One day will reflect on smiles brought forth, the shelter provided by a house's warmth, a purpose returned to these once lonely walls. We will cover this house from head to toe to remind us all this house was once a home. Join us in reaching this wonderfully absurd goal to cover this house from head to toe in foliage, flowers, vines, and roots. Our flower house is strangely perfect. My name is Lisa Wad, and 
and I'm the creator of Flower House. Flower House is an art installation taking place in October 2015. Florists from across the country will come together to fill the interior of this house with American grown fresh flowers and living plants. With your help, we hope to raise money to responsibly tear down these houses and repurpose the land for a beautiful flower farm. Join us in giving this house one last hurrah before we tear it down. It's okay to cry, I do every time. So, um, <clears throat> sorry, I thought I was in trouble because someone was coming up here. <laughs> um, so, uh, we progressed through the summer. We did a preview installation in that house that I bought on a whim. <laughs> um, and we got to October, and we, we did our installation. There were 37 florists. Uh, 106 volunteers, um, 40,000 flowers. Um, <laughs> has anyone heard my flower house presentation before? OK, here's my joke. Oh, Maggie, don't laugh. OK, be sure you laugh. Those are the original legs of that sink. <laughs> um, we had, um, I programmed the ticketing, and we sold out at 2,000 people. And people kept hearing about it and hearing about it and showing up. And so we got about 3,400 people through the house in three days. Um, and this is a tech conference, right? So I, I will say something kind of techy. We had 287 million media impressions online. That was a functional waterfall in the dining room. I asked for 300 iris, and all the flowers were donated. And the growers in California sent 3,000 on purpose because they were really excited. So it was my diva moment. I was like, oh, get these iris out of here. <laughs> 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 and so there's living iris wallpaper. So um, Flower House was amazing. Most people loved it. And then um, you look on Facebook, and not everyone loves it. <laughs> so um, this was really interesting to. Um, engage or not engage um, online because we had, you know, I had the vision and I knew what we were doing with Flower House. Um, it was an art installation first and foremost. It was a hugely collaborative project and um, the end game for it was to deconstruct the house and use the land for a flower farm, which was really helpful for me. Also, I couldn't afford to fix up this house. There were like crazy estimates. And um, uh, one interesting thing that I didn't always get to say when I was talking about the project because that's like a lot to tell someone and t attention spans are short. Um, with, the, with the deconstruction partners that we chose, Reclaim Detroit, not only do they um, bundle up you know, all the floor from the kitchen and put the address on it and people can go and buy that and use it for their project and they know where it came from, they have the address, which is really great, you know, divert it from the landfill, but also they train people um, many folks who've never had a job or were formerly incarcerated with these skills. Um, we have about, what, 70,000 abandoned houses, so I think like that's a, a fairly um, job security kind of thing. So um, we had this kind of back-end um, plan, and it felt really good. So when I would read these kind of things, um, I didn't feel like I needed to engage with this kind of stuff. And, you know, you can't always. Like, people don't always, this is not really people who want to engage and, like, learn the actual story. Um, here's one of the fellows who helped us. Skip that. Um, so, when I was thinking um, of, I, of kind of about, as um, Heidi was saying at the beginning in, in her intro to Intermittent, like thinking about like what makes a project a success or a conference a su success, and um, I, th I looked back to this image that I had that really stuck with me, and um, you know, really contemplating like, did we do what I hoped it would do? And so this is our Detroit version. For those of you who know Amanda Uli at 826 Michigan, this is her daughter. So it feels really good. Um, can I, is there a way to have the next um, slide happening? Um, so um, let me try to think here where I am. Okay, yes, the world's most unflattering picture. <laughs> I meant, can you have it up on the monitor, the next slide, if, if it's cool? Um, so this is 
Monday morning after Flower House, I'm obviously incredibly tired. I've had very little sleep, but I remember being very happy. <laughs> um, but it was crazy, even at Flower House, like, we're finally here, we're pulling it off, it's happening, and everyone's like, so, Lisa, what's next? And I was like, oh, my God, a nap. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> so um, it took a whole year to recover, but um, one, one year later, the same week that we did Flower House, um, we produced Detroit Flower Week, um, which was a floral design conference, generally, symposium, kind of whatever you want to call it. And um, um, it was really to revisit that, feel, that immense feeling of collaboration that we had at Flower House, where there were so many people working towards a common goal. And um, there, this kind of feeling of, you know, you like today at our breaks, you go and you stand in the bathroom line and you meet someone, you're like, oh my God, that was awesome. Like, you can't produce that kind of stuff. You can't, you know, artificially put people together and expect it to feel good. So my goal was to get as many, like, really cool, innovative people in a room with this common general interest of flowers and plants. So um, I was, we worked really hard, my team and I, I'm sure you guys are familiar, familiar with this. It's like, okay, we launched the site next Friday. We launched the site next Friday. <laughs> like we launched the site next Friday, and it kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And finally, like we had our speakers and we had the whole the site up and the ticketing sales live, and we launched it. And I was like, "Yes, it's happening. This is awesome." And then I got an email that completely shook my foundation. Um, a, a woman in Detroit that I did not know sent me um, an email that obviously said um, she was at first really excited when she heard about DFW, and, um, and then she was really disappointed. And pointedly, she was disappointed because when she clicked on the presenter um, uh, page, it was all white faces. And um, so we had um, a lot of very humbling exchanges, a lot of eye-opening exchanges, and basically um, what, what my response was was, well, from where I was sitting, I cast my net, and this is these are the people who were able to join us. Um, and um, you know, I without like over explaining and trying to be like, no, 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 like I have this open heart and everyone's invited, kind of thing. That you know, that it's like gets really like defensive. Um, you know, we just kind of had this um, slow email exchange, and um, and so what had happened was I had my eyes on a designer, a, a designer, I'm sorry, um, a floral designer out in LA. Um, he's really innovative, um, and he's um, um, called oh, the very best Instagram feed you will ever read. Um, it's called Bloom and Plume. His name is Maurice Harris. Um, I had sent him an email um, before, and I never heard back from him. And I didn't fault him for that, because I probably owe a lot of people in here an email, and like I get it. Um, so when I had this conversation, I didn't know what to do. And this woman and I, we were kind of, it was just kind of like this, like, eh, like, I, I felt really like I didn't, I didn't know what to do and I didn't have the tools. And, um, so I actually sent Maurice a second email and I said, hi, it's me again, <laughs> like the person you never wrote back to. <laughs> um, and something has changed in my planning of this. Um, I launched the site, I had this conversation and... I don't really feel very comfortable with how this industry is. That when I cast my net, this is what I got back. And if you are, if you are willing and able, I would love to have this conversation with you. And if you're willing and able to reconsider you not answering me at all, <laughs> would you come and would you help us talk about this? And um, he called me in five minutes and he said, now we're talking. And so, um, so Maurice came, um, and um, it was, you know, this email that I had with this woman, she's like, well, there's always next year. And how I am, it, it, that didn't feel right. I, like, I didn't want to, like, wait a whole year and, like, oh, work on this. And that, I was like, no. So we pointedly um, set aside, we made an extra, um, an extra two-hour um, panel discussion to talk about why there's a lack of diversity in the floral design industry. Um, there's a lot of me's in the, my industry. So, um, so Detroit Flower Week happened. We had 
um, a really glorious week. And then we somehow finagled our way into the Detroit Public Library, where we had dinner for 250 people under a glorious canopy designed by my friend Joe Massey in London. And um, it really honestly felt like it had bettered the conference to add that. So um, takeaways, we all love these. Um, from Flower House, I learned that organization is freedom. My staff laughs at me when I'm like, well, organization is freedom. <laughs> but with Flower House, it was actually able to add um, a screening of a documentary about the Dior show that inspired Flower House two weeks out from the installation because we were so organized. We were able to add this major thing. And at Detroit Flower Week, we were so organized that we were able to take time to plan this really, really important conversation. Um, and as a result, I'm actually speaking in a month at a conference out in Seattle, and there's an afternoon dedicated to the same conversation. So, um, second takeaway, collaboration means it's not mine anymore, it's ours. When I invited these 37, I don't know, maybe give or take in that picture, but um, these people in to do Flower House, we were all here because we wanted to create and experience that breathtaking moment, but, um, but I could not have done it without them. And you genuinely have to um, give it up and let other people be a part of it and change it. Um, as with Detroit Flower Week, and like I said, um, it changed it for the better. And almost the most important thing that I learned, which is, um, I don't know, kind of surreal, I have a different relationship with press now. Um, with Flower House, um, we got all this press, and initially it was like, oh my god, I'm on whatever, hyper allergic. Like, that's so cool. Like, I love to send that link to Steve and be like, look what I'm in. But this is really how you get the word out. This is how you make your event inclusive and available to everyone. So it's not just people in a Paris mansion. And then the same with um, Detroit Flower Week. We were actually able to change the conversation. It's not just about floral design. It's not just about like how much I love the new like hybrid garden roses coming from David Austin. We were able to have really important conversations. So this is the last slide because I didn't know how to end this. <laughs> um, when I was working with Heidi to develop this, um, I thought that the title would be Don't Read the Comments. And then I was like, no, no, the title is Read the Comments. And so I guess the title is Don't Read the Comments, except when you should read the comments. <laughs>